Iron Gwazi is the highly anticipated new hybrid coaster from Rocky Mountain Construction that I can tell you already is easily one of the best roller coasters in the world. It was originally set to open in early 2020, but due to the pandemic and the corresponding factors that followed, the ride only recently opened. And let me tell you, when a ride is hyped up for this long, you worry about it meeting those expectations. But Iron Gwazi delivered. It almost became a meme that this ride would never open. And even now, making this video feels weird to say, yeah, I rode Iron Gwazi. And as of when this video is being made, I currently have about a dozen rides in on it. This includes the front, back, everywhere in between. And I believe it was Neil Thurman, park president of Busch Gardens Tampa, that said, this is RMC at its finest. And with that, I couldn't agree more. This is an absolutely stellar attraction. The company was able to take two dueling GCI roller coasters, combine them into one layout, use some of the existing structure, but also venture outside a little. If you ever rode the original Guazi, which is something I actually did not get the chance to do, this ride has absolutely no resemblance to what those rides were. I heard horror stories about it being rough and just in a terrible condition. And it was always that ride that everyone said they need to give it the RMC treatment. And I'm so thrilled that the park did just that. So let's talk about some of these elements. We have a height of 206 feet. That makes it the tallest hybrid coaster in America, one foot taller than Steel Vengeance. And that's with a completely new lift hill. While Steel Vengeance built upon that existing lift hill with Mean Streak, Iron Gwazi uses the steel truss system because the original lift hills of Gwazi were not usable for something of this height. So they constructed their own lift from the ground up and they drop you at a 91 degree angle, one degree steeper than Steel Vengeance, making it the steepest hybrid coaster in America and the steepest RMC. And I know one of the first things people were asking is, can you actually feel that extra degree? Does the ride feel beyond vertical? And frankly, I would say not really. It feels like a vertical drop. Some phenomenal airtime going over it. And what's crazy about Iron Quasi is its height is 206 feet, but so is its drop. They actually had to dig down a little bit to accommodate for the track to go right to ground level. And you absolutely fly hitting that speed at 76 miles per hour. And that is just the beginning. This ride is a powerhouse. Every single one of these elements delivers. And it's not repetitive either. You know, one of the things that people say about some of these RMCs is every element feels the same. And that's not a dig against rides like Steel Vengeance or Twisted Timbers. Both of those rides have numerous airtime hills directly in a row. And it's awesome. I love those rides. But I think what makes Iron Gwazi nice is every single moment is fantastic in its own way. So you get ejected over this first drop, plummeting all the way down to the ground, and you hit that first element. This is if you took the outer bank on Steel Vengeance, but made it whippier. That's the way I would best describe this moment. You'd rise up into what you think would be a normal hill, but then you rotate outside, and yeah, you get ejector there before you flip back going the other direction. I love the outer bank on Steel Vengeance, and I think which one you prefer will just depend on what sort of moment you're looking for. This one's definitely whippier, but that one is more sustained. So you can't really go wrong with either. But following that moment, you're incredibly low to the ground. You fly up back towards the structure, this time rising up into probably the most famous element on this ride, which has been nicknamed the death roll. This is named after a maneuver that crocodiles do to kill their prey. When they have an animal in their grasp, they rotate their bodies over and over and over again. This is what Iron Quasi does. The proper name for this element is the barrel roll down drop. It rotates you 540 degrees. You actually start outside and then flip the other way. And when you look at this thing from off, you realize how much you are falling when you are at the start of this roll to the bottom. But what's interesting is when you're actually doing this maneuver, you don't realize how much you're dropping. I would say the only thing that you really feel there is that you can tell that you're picking up speed, but you don't really notice the height difference, which is interesting because I think before this ride opened, everyone expected that to be the highlight of Iron Gwazi. And it's a great maneuver, but honestly, I wouldn't say it was as crazy as I was expecting. It's still really good, definitely a highlight, but it's not the best moment on the ride. So after that, you hit an overbank curve. And let me just say, RMC is absolutely mastered going from one element to the next. It is so seamless. It is comfortable. It feels natural. And even when it's doing something crazy, it doesn't feel forced. It's really quite incredible how far they've come. They've always done good rides, but Iron Gwazi really is a masterpiece. This overbank is really fun. You rotate at a way that almost makes you feel like you're upside down. You twist out of it, fly back towards the ground, and rise up into the star moment, and that is the wave turn 
behind the station. This is a spot that caught everyone's attention because it's eye-catching. It's the main element you see besides the lift hill when you're walking around the plaza. You watch the trains flip 90 degrees, hanging them on their sides, then flip back. And it looks fun, and I've done a lot of wave turns, and there's some good ones out there. I really like the one on Twisted Colossus. Lightning Rod has a good one. Ala Runs is fantastic. But this might be the craziest wave turn ever built. And not because of its length. When you do one on one of those other rides, Maybe it feels like it lasts longer, but this one manages to give you ejector airtime while you are sideways, which is not something that those other elements haven't done before, but this one launches you out of your seat. It is unbelievable. I never thought that I would say the best airtime moment on a ride is the one that you experience sideways. That doesn't even make sense, but somehow RMC has figured it out. What an unbelievable moment. It's visually pleasing to the eye. It's like right in the middle of the ride, so Iron Gwazi is still going hard. It's not losing any of its speed or momentum. It really is something else. So following that, there's a small little ejector pop as you get thrown to the left. This is another bank turn, and then you flip into a zero-g stall. This is our second inversion on the ride. And you know, I honestly expected a little more from this stall. It's probably the only moment on Iron Gwazi that I was a little underwhelmed with. And that's not me saying it is bad. There is not a dull moment on Iron Gwazi. But as someone that has done a lot of zero-g stalls, including Goliaths at Great America, Wildfires at Cole Martin, Hakuge, Twisted Colossus, you name it, I don't think this is one of the better ones. I'd say it's probably on the weaker end. Again, not bad, but I think maybe the reason I say that is because it is a little short. It doesn't last very long. It doesn't quite have the whip that the stall does on Steel Vengeance. When that one hits, you snap into it and snap out of it. I would say this one is a smooth transition in and a smooth transition out, which is totally fine. Again, I really like this moment. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think it is one of the best parts of this ride. It just so happens that there are other parts of Iron Gwazi that stand out more, and some of those are still coming up. Iron Gwazi throws in a trick track. Now, this is not as crazy as you do a trick track on, like, Storm. Storm Chaser, I'd say it's maybe a little bit more comparable to the Trek Track on Twisted Timbers. You kind of get thrown to either side before twisting to the right, and then Iron Gwazi goes out with a bang. We have an awesome ejector airtime hill that throws you down into the brake run. It is one heck of a finale. And when you hit this moment, it honestly feels like the second biggest drop on the ride, which I'm sure is not the case. Like I'm sure after you do the outer bank before the 540 roll, that's a lot higher off the ground. But you aren't getting airtime there like you are on this part. This is more comparable to the drop off the quarry wall on Iron Rattler. And that's my favorite part of Iron Rattler. And it feels like there's that moment on this ride, but this they aren't dropping you off a cliff. They don't need to. So yeah, you can imagine when you're sitting in the back row, you get sustained airtime before you whip left into the brakes. And that is your ride on Iron Gwazi. It'll literally leave you speechless. It is a huge adrenaline rush. It is nonstop action from start to finish. I can't imagine anyone gets off this ride and says, eh, you know, it's all right. It's smooth, it's got the height, it's got the speed, it's got the great mix of elements. It's without a doubt the best roller coaster at Busch Gardens Tampa. I don't think anyone questioned that. You could easily make an argument for it being the best roller coaster in Florida. You could make an argument for it being the best RMC. And I've heard from some people that it's their new favorite roller coaster. Ever. So yeah, how good is Iron Gwazi? It's phenomenal, at least in terms of layout. I'll talk about a few other quick things first before giving it a final score. I don't think this will come up as too much of a surprise for anyone. I wouldn't say Iron Gwazi is the most themed attraction out there. It's not going to be the most themed roller coaster at Busch Gardens or anything. I still give that to Cobra's Curse. I did see some nice signage in the queue, which was more than I was expecting, frankly. There was also some homage to the original Gwazi comparing the old tracks to this new one. And then when you're sitting on the brake run, there's a reference to Tiger and Lion, which which was the name of the two sides. I would say Iron Gwazi is not really themed. It's more stylized. There's lots of green everywhere and this kind of African feel, which is very on brand for the park. So visually, it looks great. It's got a great entrance. And you know, this is the first attraction that you see when you enter Busch Gardens Tampa. It's right up front. And because this lift hill is so tall, you can see it from anywhere in the park. So it makes a bold first impression. The only downside I would say is you can't see as much of the structure from in the park. Because the way Busch Gardens is laid out the center of the park is where the backstage area is and so from most vantage points on the guest pathways you just see the lift hill which when you got such a massive wooden structure i wish there were more points where you could really see this ride 
In terms of trains and restraints, this uses the RMC swing axle trains as the same as Twisted Timbers, Steel Vengeance, Zadra. It's that second generation RMC train. So it has more wheels that help steer the train, makes it ultra smooth. And I also gotta commend the lap bars. You know, a lot of people make fun of the RMC lap bars for being really heavy, tough to push down or pull up. I didn't think these were that bad. And you know, unlike some RMC restraints, when you ride Iron Gwazi, I didn't feel like these lap bars came down on you during the ride as much as some others. Like they're not like locked in place to the point that they won't move like a gravity group lap bar. But I think it's definitely possible to get some great airtime during the ride without worrying about getting stapled just because of the ride forces. And of course I recommend the front and the back row. I tend to be more of a backseat rider, so I'll give the back the slight edge. But you know, the front really is phenomenal. I don't think there's a bad seat on this ride. And that's the sign of a good roller coaster. You don't have to ride it in a specific row in order to get a good experience. I've ridden Iron Gwazi in the middle. I still loved it. So for Iron Gwazi's final score, of course I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. That's a no brainer. Is it my favorite RMC though? And honestly, I don't know. More so than some other roller coasters, this is a really tough ride for me to place. I can definitely tell you it is one of my top RMCs and therefore it's in my top 10. I know that. You know, for me, the top RMCs are probably Steel Vengeance, Hakuge, and this. Not necessarily in that order. But the thing that all three of those rides have in common is there are these huge structures that pack in quite a lot of ride with great airtime moments, wild, out-of-control maneuvers, and each one of them will leave you breathless and probably with bruises on your legs from all the airtime you've been given. So I think I'm going to need a little bit more time to think about it. I know I'll have a top 25 out later this year, but I'm constantly updating my opinions. So maybe that'll have an effect on it. We'll have to see, though. I would love to hear from you guys. If you have ridden Iron Gwazi, what did you think of it? Post all of those thoughts down below and stay tuned for more coaster reviews here at Coaster Studios. And I'll see you next time.